Second Timothy chapter number three, and I want to read to you from verse 16. This is wonderful. Oh, I like it. Ready? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Hmm. And is profitable. That means it gives you the advantage. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. It doesn't matter how poor somebody is. If you listen to me for long enough, you become rich. Yeah. It doesn't matter how wayward someone is. If you listen to me for long enough, you straighten out. And you become excellent. If I sat with a dummy, with a fool, and the fool listened to me, you become wise. Why? Not because I got the material here, because it's in here. Spirit talks to spirit. You see it? If you will listen. Not that too many people live in their lives without direction. Just going, even in ministry, even pastors. There are pastors who are in ministry. No direction. They're just going. No, don't let it happen to you. It may have happened for a long while. You can change it. You can change it. Stop in your tracks. Ask yourself, hey, where are you going? Where? Where are you going? Where are you going? While I was still a student in school, I was saying, I'm going to change this world. I didn't know how big the world was. But I, I was talking like that. But many years have come and gone. I still think the same way. I still think like that. I look back and I say, wow, it was not a mistake. It was in your spirit. He says, the scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. For doctrine? What is the doctrine for? What is the doctrine for? To change your opinions. To indoctrinate you to change your opinions. To change your thinking. Can you see it? God wants to change your opinions. He wants to change your thinking. Listen. And this is so important. God wants to change your opinion about himself, about other people, about the world, and about the world around you, about everything, about life. He wants to change your opinion. He wants to give you a way of thinking. The question is, have you imbibed that way of thinking that God has given to you? If you had fears in your life, God wants to change your fears. You see that? He wants to change your fears. He says it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. If you were going in the wrong direction, he has given the scripture. He says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means God, God breathes it. It's coming from him. It's coming from God. It's inspirational. And it has the ability. He says it's profitable. It works. It works. For doctrine. For reproof. For correction. So he seeks to change your mind. He seeks to change the way you reason. He seeks to change it. That's why I said to you. One whole year. Can you point at something in your life. A change that you have made. Can you look at your life and say, this one year, I grew like this. I added this to my life. I put this quality into my life. Or you can't tell. You can't tell anything. Whether you've adjusted in your life. Are there things you can pick in your life and say, I used to be like this. And I'm not like this anymore. I do like this now. This used to happen to me. It don't happen anymore. What? change have you brought into your life or the same things i used to press you in the night when you were in, in your sleep five years ago are they still pressing you or the infirmity 
that you were suffering three years ago, is it still there? It's amazing how we carry some things on in life and just act like they're not there, but they are there and they trouble us. And we just go on. We just go on. Realizing that we're not living a life of victory, but a life of defeat. So, we're shamed within. There's a war within that we're not winning. And we ought to win the war within. And the simple way to begin that is number one, to act on God's word. Study the Bible. Study the Bible. If you ignore the Bible, you are ignoring solutions. You are ignoring answers. Understand it. If you ignore the Bible, you are ignoring the solutions that God has given you. You are ignoring the answers that God has given you. You are ignoring ability. You are ignoring empowerment. Knowledge empowers you. And what is going to happen to you in the evil day? What will happen when that evil day comes? The Bible tells you about the evil day. It's not every day that that evil day is. The Bible does say that the days are evil. But that's not what he was describing when he talked about the evil day. It just means the influence of each day in the world is satanic. And God expects us to master every day. But then he talks about the evil day. And that evil day that he talks to us about in Ephesians the 6th chapter. For which reason he tells us to put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor. He didn't say when something happens, quickly collect the armor and wear it. No, you put on the whole armor of God. Always. Always. So that when that evil day comes, you will win. You know that evil day came for some people and they lost. And when something happens, we start asking ourselves, we don't understand. How could that have happened? How did that happen to so and so? How could that have how, how? What happened? Well, the evil day came. And he was not prepared. But we were warned about it in the Bible. Maybe we should read it. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, we can sing Abraham's blessings are mine. I'm blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening. But there's an evil day. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when that evil day comes, it doesn't change the blessing, does it? No, it doesn't change it. It's how we respond. Okay. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wires, the stratagems of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Think about that. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Whew. My, 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 my. He didn't say against spirits of darkness of this world. Even though they are spirits of darkness of this world. He's telling you the, the rank, the class of spirits. The class of spirits. He says, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Then listen to the next term. Against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realms. In the earth realm, we are dealing with the rulers of the darkness of this world. In the heavenly realms, we are dealing with spiritual wickedness. Unrestrained wickedness. Only to be restrained by the power of God. These are the forces that we are arrayed against. And with all these forces, you are standing there talking about your brother wrongly. You are bad mouthing your brother, you are bad mouthing your sister in Christ. Bad mouthing another pastor or bad mouthing a deacon or deacons. You don't have time for that. Look at your adversaries. See how desperate your adversaries are. If you heard something about a pastor, a brother, or a sister, what would you do? Intercede. Because look at what they are arrayed against. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Okay, back to Ephesians chapter number 6. 
verse 11 put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wires of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore oh hallelujah wherefore take on to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand that you may be able to what withstand hi hey. mm. that means to resist to resist to stand your ground if something happens will you succumb to fear Will you so come to fear? Listen, I want you to listen to the word again. Oh, Sakila, Angro doors keep at it. Listen, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God and withstand. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. Try and withstand. He says, Take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able. You know, he is saying to you, do something that will produce the results. He's saying, take on the whole armor of God. He didn't say when you take on the whole armor, then you will stand. He didn't say make an effort. He says the ability will come when you take on the whole armor that he may be able without that you are unable now you want to be able he says this is what you do to be able this is what you do to be able oh i want to jump and i try mm. oh, i didn't go high enough they said that that's the bar you're gonna have to jump i'm gonna try again oh, it didn't work so somebody comes and says pastor wear these spring shoes wear them when you wear them you will be able to jump very high the shoes will make you able to jump very high then i wear the spring shoes and i find myself going like that oh my goodness without even an effort then i go whoops and i'm going Ooh, the shoes the spring shoes made me able he knew i couldn't do it so he said wear these shoes they will make you able are you getting it now that you may be able to withstand what will you do in the evil day what will you do in the evil day. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What will you do? Will it be a testimony? What will you do? The evil day is not just one particular calendar day in the whole life. No. It comes at different points in life. It comes at different points in life. You have already met some in which you won. Yes. You already met some in which you won. Let me read it. He says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Having done all to stand. And then your story, it came to pass. It came to pass. Enrich the body of Christ. That's what your life should do. Your life will enrich the body of Christ. We, when we read, we read of Moses. We read of Joshua. We read of these great men of God. But the testimonies are not ended. Now the church is enriched, having done all to stand. He says that ye may be able 
that he may be able. I'm convinced that the word of God has everything that we need to put us over in life. It doesn't matter what we face. Are you hearing me? It doesn't matter what we face. The word of God has everything that we require to put us over in life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll read another scripture. You ready? I want you to go to go to the book of James. Hallelujah. In James chapter 1, when we read from the 12th verse, it tells us something. I want us to take a look at it. Oh, glory to God. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Say hallelujah. <laughs> he didn't say blessed is the man that does not have any temptation. No. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Say it with me. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Listen, if you've been pushed against the wall, you are blessed. When temptation comes to try you, don't think that some evil thing has happened to you. Your situation is not unique. No. It's what we're all exposed to in the body of Christ. Now he says it's a blessing. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. Endure it. That means it's going on over a period of time. It can come in different ways. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When he's tried like gold. When he's proved. He shall receive a crown of life. Hallelujah. Which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted. I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust that conceived bringeth forth sin. And sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Do not err my beloved brethren. Can you see that? Do not err, my beloved brethren. He says, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. How many people who were called into the ministry were enticed by worldly things and didn't fulfill the ministry and went away? There are different kinds of things that people crave for. And their cravings cost them to make a detour and go after the wrong things in life. Have you been tempted to find alternatives to your faith? Have you been tempted to look for another way out? I'm talking about the war within. Sometimes you're going through pressures and you're thinking in your life. Could this other thing be a solution? Could this other way be a solution? And at that time, you start seeing people who tried all the, all, the, all the alternatives that produce one result or the other. Now, they're all bringing their stories to you. And you're wondering, what shall I do? What shall I do? Blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, when he is proved, he shall receive the crown of life. Hallelujah. Let me read you another scripture. 1 Corinthians.
chapter 10. Have you found it? Read verse 13. They had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said your condition is not unique. It has happened before. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Your, your situation is not unique. God is not facing a new thing. Are you hearing me? God has not found himself in your case in a new situation that he doesn't know what to do. No. They had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you, permit you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape brother there's a way of escape <laughs> there's a way of escape there's a testimony waiting for you mm. Mm -hmm. but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that he may be able to bear it that means to endure it so no matter what you're experiencing, no matter what you're going through, make up your mind. You're going to go the testimony way. You're coming through this thing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're coming through this thing. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you're coming through this thing. It doesn't matter for how long it's been. That's why you listen to messages like this. Because they stare your face. Against hope, I believe in hope. The Bible says of Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to give glory to God in my life. My life is for the glory of God. I'm making progress. I'm moving forward. From glory to glory. My path is as a shining light, shining brighter and brighter on to the perfect day. I'm getting greater by the day, more influential by the day. Hallelujah. 